and honored guests, parents, family members, and students. I'm Kim Barney, and it's with great honor that I get to serve you as the director for Raven Home School. On behalf of the Yukon Quakeup School District Board of Education and Superintendent Carrie Boyd, it's my pleasure to welcome each of you to the 22-23 Raven Home School graduation ceremony. Graduation signifies a rite of passage and represents the culmination of a student's academic achievement with Raven. It's a time of celebration and reflection for students, family, friends, and staff as we come together to share in the joy of the goals accomplished by our graduates. We have 18 students graduating this year and 12 are walking here tonight. Thank you for joining us in celebrating these students and their accomplishments. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I would like the graduates to come up and take a rose to someone who is special to them and help them through school. Come on now, for the sake of the king and grab a rose. too much lately because I got a brand new knee two weeks ago. So you bear with me as I limp and wince in pain. Congratulations to all of you. I'm really proud of you. I have a special place in my heart for homeschool anyway because of my six kids, five of them were homeschooled for about 10 years. And it's not easy because you have to mix being a parent and a teacher and separating those two is not always easy. So my hat's off to all the successful parents who brought their kids here today to this point in their lives. It's an honor to be here today to speak with you. As was mentioned earlier, grad graduation is a culmination of everything you've worked for. It's a huge step. And it shows that you set a goal and you accomplished it. It's the, it's the first of hundreds of goals you'll set for yourself in your life. All the time I was on the radio or working in government, one of the things that would drive employees nuts is I would list things. If people came to me with a question or a problem, I said, let's make a list. Ben Franklin was a, a bit of a lister. He would do the pros and cons of each decision. So I did that all the time. And it served me pretty well. It wasn't perfect. It's not an exact science. 
So today I bring a list of things that are like Jim's rules for life. You can take or leave some of them. I hope that they will make an impression on you. I wish I could have known more about these when I was in high school. I won't tell you what year I graduated. I am actually a Lathrop graduate and I am Serbian, Croatian. So I have a lot in common with a lot of people out here in Delta. I'm a son of a bitch, just so you all know. Where's my drum set when I need it? All right, here's, here's 10 things that I hope graduates will take tonight. I, don't, I want you to remember to laugh. There's too much stuff that's way too serious, and parents, you know what I'm talking about. There's so much negativity on social media. That's what I call it. It's pretty unsocial for the most part. Life is a wonderful journey, and I want you to be able to smile and laugh as much as you possibly can, because you're gonna run into a lot of funny stuff. Number two, and I think this is important, I want you to make a promise to yourself that you'll call your friends and your family. Call them often. Texting is okay, but talking is much better. Voice to voice is so much better than texting. And you just can't beat that personal touch. So please, when you can, call. It's okay to text, though. It's not always available. And this one's really important. I'm going to move over here a little bit so I can actually see the students as well as the, the crowd. It's really important to keep your word. If you make a promise, keep it. Pretty simple to do, to say, but not always easy to do. Make sure you keep your word. It's not very easy all the time, but you'll be amazed at the relationships that can help you build and the integrity you'll build in the process. I really put a lot of emphasis on two words that start with V. Vote and volunteer. I think both of those things are hugely important. Voting just because your voice can make a difference. But if you volunteer, and many of you probably already do, I think a lot of homeschool kids get it right. No offense to public school kids. No, really, there's good students on, in every step. But if you volunteer, you'll take that, that focus off of yourself and put it on someone else who really needs it. Because we're all very blessed. And suddenly, always has it worse than us. Always. So I would encourage you to volunteer as much as you can. And when you're done, volunteer some more. Stay away from drugs. I'm just going to say it like that. I sit on the opioid task force for the governor for a reason. Because it's ravaging our state. It's ravaging the villages. It's ravaging a lot of homes. And I use the word ravaging because that's what it is. I'm not here to be political. I'm just telling you to stay away from that stuff. And if you're unsure, you can call me anytime. Call your family if you ever have any questions. Because you never know what you're gonna get. I've seen it firsthand when I was in the city. And I'm also saying it because someone very close to me in my family struggles with it every day. And uh, it's not a fun path to be on. So just stay away from that. You better stay away from that. This one I, I do just for fun. As you can see by my tie, I encourage you all to listen to the Beatles. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding. So many of life's beautiful moments have been captured in Beatles songs. And I'm not kidding. They really have. Songs of hope. Songs of religion, happiness, love, loss, and life itself. To me, it's poetry set to music. So if you feel down or down, put on some beats. I mean, Taylor Swift's okay. And I DJ gigs, right? I listen, to, I listen to that stuff. I do. But I always come back to McCartney, Starr, Harrison, and Lennon. So put on some beats. All right, I think this is probably the most important thing I'll, I'll talk about tonight. And it's called listening. When I was first elected mayor in 2016, I was in charge of the meetings at the city council. 
I had to learn to keep my mouth shut. I was on the radio for 20 years, and my nickname growing up was Malherly, not Natherly, because I would not stop talking. And when you have to sit and listen, you'll learn a lot more. And when you listen, don't listen just to respond. So if I'm, if I'm talking to you, and I'm ready to pounce, and you're talking to me, I should be listening to learn from you, not to attack. Listening is very important. So learn to listen and engage with people. Learn to compromise. Ryan Tilbury and I talk about this all the time. I will get a little bit political here. If you're so extreme that you're immovable, if you're so extreme that no one else matters, you're going to have a hard time. When I was working for the city, I had to drive on the road. You can't drive in the ditch and get much work done. And that's both sides of the road, right and left. So I'm using that as an example. It's okay to have things that you're passionate about. You have to be passionate about things. But also learn to compromise. You get a lot more work done, no matter what field you go into, no matter what relationships you have, if, you're, if you listen more and work toward the middle to help everybody. If you're immovable on one side, it'll be tougher. That's all. So I hope you keep that in mind. Here's one that I always was bugged about when I was a manager. I was also raised in the Dairy Queen. My dad owned two Dairy Queen stores in Fairbanks. I left that off my bio. I try not to remember those days because I would drink the chocolate syrup. It was terrible. But my dad told me, he better be on time. So here's my advice. Be early. If your job starts at 8, be there at 7.30. You'll never regret it. Your boss will love it. And pretty soon you'll be a valuable employee. So as much as you can, be early. It's funny, some people will be, if, if it's Guardians of the Galaxy, they'll be an hour early. But to their job, they'll walk in five minutes late. It's just about priorities. So I would, I would also tell you to be early to everything. It shows respect for the people that you're working for, or you volunteer for, but it shows respect for you too, for yourself. And my final rule for life is cultivate your personal relationships. You will count on those personal relationships long after your iPhone disappears, your iPad goes away, or any of that stuff. If you don't build personal relationships, your life won't be as rich. Um, like with Ryan and I, I consider us friends, and if I needed something at three in the morning, I could call him. He may not be happy I called him, but he would help me. He would, and I would do the same for him. Personal relationships are so important. Now, homeschool students know this. That's been my, my experience. We do things together as a family. They learn as a family. They go do things as a family. So as you grow up more than you are now, make sure those relationships are front and center with people that you love and respect. Your bosses, even if you disagree with them, cultivate those relationships because you just might find a friend out of it. Or you can find someone that doesn't agree with you and maybe get them to see your side of things too. You just never know. And those are my 10 things. They're pretty simple. They're not always easy to do. I fall down all the time trying to do them. Um, but I still think they're a good path for a lot of people. To the parents, again, to the extended families out here, I really congratulate you on the homeschooling. It's very difficult to do. And the proof in your work is sitting right up here on this stage tonight. And you can be very, very proud of them and what they've accomplished. And I'll just send you away with God's blessings for every step that you take from here on out. I wish you all the very best in your life journey. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. I'm really proud of you guys. This has been a really wonderful year. So my name is Ryan Silbury. I'm the high school counselor at Raven. Um, I have had the distinct honor and pleasure of working with many of our graduates here this evening. I can't say enough about how much I have grown to respect and admire each of them. I personally want to thank each of you and your families that are in the audience today for trusting Raven, trusting us to assist you as you navigated your path through high school. Each of your journeys, journeys has really been unique. And the more I've gotten to know you, the more I've seen that. And some of the challenges you guys have faced have been difficult. You are like the COVID class. You had to deal with all the mask stuff. I mean, it was the spring of your freshman year. And some of you guys came to us because of that. 
So we're really happy that you trust us um, to work with you. So our first uh, recognition is for students who have earned the Alaska Performance Scholarship. This, this scholarship provides an opportunity for Alaska high school students to earn a scholarship to help cover the costs of an Alaska post-secondary education. Alaska high school students who take a more rigorous curriculum get good grades and score well on college placement or work readiness exams to earn this prestigious award. So please stand and remain standing when your name is called. Our recipients are jo Josiah Dorhorst. Please stand. All right, round of applause. Okay, founded in 1983, the President's Education Awards Program honors graduating high school students for their achievements and hard work. The program has provided individual recognition from the President and the U.S. Secretary of Education to those students whose outstanding efforts have enabled them to meet challenging standards of excellence. Each year, thousands of high school student, high schools participate by recognizing deserving students. This award is designed to recognize academic success. Please stand and remain standing when your name is called. Our gold awards go to Kimberly Crawford. The President's Award for Educational Achievement recognizes students that show outstanding educational growth, improvement, commitment, or intellectual development in their academic subjects. Its purpose is to encourage and reward students who give their best effort, often in the face of unique obstacles. Please stand when your name is called and remain standing. Our silver awards go to Victoria Bosman. Um, please be seated. Our next award is the UA Scholars Award. It was originally established in 1999 to provide an incentive to, for Alaska's high school students to achieve academic excellence, to nourish efforts of schools to provide high quality education, and to encourage the top school graduates from every community in Alaska to attend the University of Alaska. UA Scholars Award continues to keep Alaska's top high school graduates in state while continuing in their education at the University of Alaska. The UA Scholars Award is a $12,000 scholarship awarded to Alaska high school students who are in the top 10% of their class at the end of their junior year as determined by their school. The award may be used at any University of Alaska campus and is distributed in the amount of $1,500 per semester for eight semesters. Please stand and stay standing when your name is called. Our UA Scholar recipients are Solomon Obolenza. Next, we recognize our National Honor Society members. The National Honor Society elevates a school's commitment to the values of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. These four pillars have been associated with membership in the organization since its inception in 1921. Today, it is estimated that more than one million students participate in NHS activities. Chapter membership not only recognizes students for their accomplishments, but challenges them to develop further through active involvement in school activities and community service. This year we had a several distinguished speakers, including Linda Ellis, former U.S. National Women's Soccer Team coach who presided over two World Cup victories. She was amazing. And for Raven students here in the audience, please get good grades and join us next year for our National Honor Society. There's free food. I'm all about that. I drive down for that. So please stand and stand and remain standing when your name is called. Our national our national honor society members are Kimberly Crawford, Josiah 
last thing these students had to do for me was to describe themselves, and for some of them, it might have been the hardest thing that they had to do. Our first graduate is the eighth child out of 10 children in her family. She has four brothers and five sisters. She does not go to school, she is homeschooled, so she works full time as a barista. In her free time, she's usually sleeping, cleaning, or catching up on shows. After school, she's not really sure what she wants to do. Victoria Bazan, come on down. She was adopted in 2006, and she's been living in Alaska ever since then. She's the youngest of three, with one older brother and one sister. Her parents are David and Susan, and they spend their time working or doing their hobbies. In her free time, you can find her spending time with her dog, in the summer, they love finding new places to explore, practicing photography, or watching her favorite TV shows. She also secretly loves to organize. After she graduates, she plans on finishing her AAS degree and then going into nursing, along with furthering her photography endeavors. Kimberly Crawford, please come down. born in Mayfield Heights, Ohio. He has four brothers and sisters. His father's name is Terry and his mother's name is Linda. His father is an independent truck driver and his mother works as a business manager at the CAC. His senior hobbies include playing piano. This senior's hobbies include playing the piano, listening to audiobooks. At this time, he's unsure what he will do after high school, but it will involve researching and reading about history. Adam Denson, would you please come down? He was born and raised in Delta Junction, Alaska. He's the second oldest of four, with two brothers and a little sister. His father does farm work from home, like baling hay and slaughtering cattle, while his mother stays at home to watch the house and keep the kids busy. His mother is also a great cook, as her Filipino culture influences her amazing dishes. This senior's hobbies include playing the guitar, which he enjoys the most, hanging out with friends and playing video games. He enjoys playing the guitar for the First Baptist Church's youth band. He aspires to be someone who can help others mentally through Christ-built psychology, while also growing in his faith and encouraging the faith of others. Josiah Dorhorst, please. He is a tech-savvy and creative high school junior from Alaska. He has earned 11 out of 21 credits required to graduate this year. Originally from Washington and the oldest of six children, he has been living in Alaska for the last three years. He's passionate about computer science and audio engineering. This graduate also loves drone video videography and photography, often capturing Alaska's stunning landscapes. As, as he graduates, we cannot wait to see where his talents will take him next. Mark Frolov, please come down. born and raised here in Delta Junction. She lives on a 2,800 acre ranch where her family raises bison and pigs during the summer. Her favorite ranching activity is planting and harvesting hay because it's satisfying to see the end result of her hard work. She likes to work with the two horses she owns and go riding with her two younger sisters. Four-wheeling, shooting, snow machining, painting, Volleyball and hockey are some of her hobbies. Since she was 12, she has owned a small pie business and she plans to start another small business painting and selling bison skulls. After high school, she will be working at Delta Industrial Services for a while before she begins studying for an associate's degree in applied business at UAF. Kelly Johnson, please come down.
He is the youngest of six siblings. He grew up in Delta Junction with two brothers and three sisters. This young man is a good cook, and he's well known for his special rice dish. This graduate enjoys hunting and ice fishing in his free time. He is a thoughtful and polite young man. He plans to learn more about computer programming and get a job in cybersecurity. Nazar Kulikovsky, please come. Here. She was born and raised in Delta Junction, Alaska with her three brothers. Her mother is a realtor and her dad works in construction. She recently directed a play and it got great reviews. A couple of things she loves to do is to work with children and serve in ministry. She hopes to open a much needed daycare center here in Delta. Vanessa Kulikovsky, come on in. This senior is excited about graduating this year. He's grateful for the love and support of his wonderful parents and siblings. Living in Alaska brings him immense joy as he's surrounded by its captivating nature. Riding his ATV along the trails, hunting, fishing, and cherishing quality time with his friends and family are his favorite, favorite hobbies. Alaska holds a special place in his heart and he has no intentions of leaving anytime soon. He's excited to continue exploring the wonders life has to offer. Solomon Obalenza, please come down. He was born in Fairbanks, Alaska and raised in Delta Junction. He was brought up with an understanding that education is valuable and essential for life. He wants to say thank you to his family, especially his parents, for encouraging and always being there for him. While in high school, he was working part-time, and now that he is finishing high school, he plans to work full-time and look at life as an infinite education. Ephraim Sabonin, come on down. He was born and raised in Delta Junction, Alaska. He's the youngest of nine with four sisters and four brothers. His father is Pablo and owns a mechanic business and his mother Olga works two jobs. One is a janitor and the other is to deliver our mail. In his free time, he enjoys dirt biking, he enjoys snowmobile riding and snowboarding. He works full time at Delta Power Sports and he really enjoys it. As a side job, he fixes cars and sells them. After he graduates, he will stay with Delta Power Sports because it has amazing benefits and amazing co-workers. Daniel Borobio, come on down. Mr. Vanderly, thank you for those wonderful words of encouragement and wisdom. He's a very wise man. You would be very wise to listen. Families, congratulations. We have before us this evening a very talented group of young people. You have done an outstanding job as parents. Graduates, today marks not the end of your high school years, but rather the beginning of brand new adventure and many opportunities. You've worked hard to complete your graduation requirements and showcase your exceptional abilities. We want to thank each of you for the effort you've put forth. Your Raven team here in Delta, Miss Heidi, Miss Julie, wherever she is in the audience, and Miss Ashley, who's been our photographer for the evening, have put together some little graduation survival kits for you. They're up back there on the table along with your certificates for your awards, so make sure you pick those up before you go. And here's what they've put in your little survival kit. A toothpick to remind you to pick the good qualities in everyone, including yourself. A rubber band to remind you to be flexible, not to shoot at your siblings. <laughs> Things may not always go the way you want, but you can work it out. A band-aid to remind you to heal hurt feelings, either yours or someone else's. An eraser to remind you that everyone makes mistakes and it's important to learn from them. A mint to, to remind you that you are worth an absolute mint to your family. Your life is precious beyond what you could even imagine. A bit of bubble gum to remind you to stick with it. It can also help you in a pinch if you need to fix something. 
and that you can accomplish anything. But Tootsie Roll, to help you roll into life after high school. A paper clip, again, you can use that to fix anything, but it's to remind you to hold it all together. And a Snickers to remind you that laughter is absolutely the best medicine. A pencil. You thought you were giving those up when you got out of high school. Uh-uh, they stick around because you gotta list your accomplishments and your blessings every day. A tea bag to remind you to take time to relax daily and go over your list that you wrote down so that you can count your blessings again. And we want to leave you with these final words from Miss Angela Bassett. Don't settle for average. Always bring your best to the moment. Then, whether it fails or succeeds, at least you know you gave it all you had. Graduates, it's time for you to stand. Parents, we will take a few pauses here to get some good pictures and I will move out of the way. On behalf of the Yukon Quaycock School District, it is my pleasure and my honor to verify that the graduates before us tonight have satisfactorily completed a course of study for high school as prescribed by the Board of Education and in testimony thereof award these diplomas this given month of May 20. Graduates, you may move those tassels from the right to the left. are to be our future leaders. Thank you so much. Please get your last pictures. It's an awesome group. They made it. Parents, you made it. I know some of you still have a few more to go. Um, so join me in congratulating this class of 2023 with another round of applause.